Yeah, I got I got vaccinated last month. Yeah. What? It's the mark of the beast? Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Espresso with Sky, giving you a fresh perspective on faith, life, God, and the Bible. I am Pastor Sky, and over here are my two sidekicks. Hope you guys are having an amazing week. If you haven't done so, go ahead, hit all those crazy buttons, whether it's sub, like, whatever it is. But the most important thing is, I wanna hear your true, honest feedback on today's topic. If you wanna support this ministry, we do have PayPal and buymeacoffee.com, so go ahead and support us there. So, let's get into today's topic about the mark of the beast. So this is a controversial topic. It's been discussed for generations upon generations, and it's resurfacing today because of the coronavirus vaccinations. So here's the thing, I want everyone to calm down first because these accusations being thrown around are not new. This is a very old thing. Now, if we take a look at just America itself, America is a Christian nation, and from the 30s, many of these accusations began too. At the time of FDR, they started social security numbers. In the 60s, telecom companies were known as the B and what were they doing that was so bad? They were giving every region their own three-digit area code. 70s, people were getting credit card numbers. 80s, of people were getting barcodes. Now think about this, guys. Barcodes, credit cards, social security number, three-digit area codes. Are any of you thinking to yourself, they're the mark of the beast today? No. And once again, we have the accusation today, which is the vaccinations are the mark of the beast. Let's first go into the scripture that talks about the mark of the beast. And that's Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 18. And when you read through this, there's some key components in here. It's talking about the mark or the number of the beast. And it's put on your right hand or onto your forehead. So anyone who has these things means that they don't believe in God anymore. They don't believe in Jesus. They only believe in Satan and they worship and bow down to Satan. And this is why anyone with these marks are condemned to hell, all right? First, let's look at these scriptures in a physical way. And some people do believe this way. And they believe that on your right hand and on your forehead, there'll be some physical marking. They'll implant a chip or they'll tattoo a, a barcode or some type of sign or image that's going to be the mark of the beast. And because people look at it physically, some people will think that there's a company that's the beast. Um, it's going to be a, a single individual, a company, or even some technology or power. And they believe that these things are signs as the mark of the beast. And of course, there's gonna be some antichrist that comes, rules the world, and everyone bows down and worships this person. And anyone who does will receive the mark of the beast. And these are all physical ways of looking at it. Personally, myself, I do not believe it's a physical thing at all. And that's why I'm gonna focus a little bit more on the spiritual things. And then kind of tell you why the physical things don't really make sense to me. So now let's take a look at the mark of the beast in more of a spiritual manner. And I'm gonna tell you why I adhere more to this side rather than thinking about it as a physical thing. So the first question I wanna to give to you guys is, what is the key to salvation and condemnation? Is it something physical or is it something on the inside? And when we read verses like John 3:16, it's about belief, it's about faith, right? It's something in your heart, it's in your soul, in your spirit that you really believe in something. You believe that he is the Christ. And this is what God is judging more than the physical things on the outside. Right? So it's not determined by some type of chip. It's not determined by some tattoo you have. It's determined by faith and faith alone. And this is why when we read the Bible more and more, it's more of a spiritual book. Like for instance, in 2 Corinthians 4.18, it's about focusing on what is unseen because what is unseen is eternal. And that makes sense, right? And when you look at the things that are seen, the problem with things that you see is they are temporary and they eventually go away. Can something temporary determine my like eternal spirit? No, it is something that is internal. And this is why this last uh, verse I like to use is John 6, 63. And it says that, you know, the flesh counts for nothing. This physical counts for nothing. It's the spirit that gives life, right? And the words that Jesus gave to us, they are spirit and they are life. It is a spiritual matter, not a physical matter. So the question I would give to you, and I made myself think about this is, could something physical condemn you to hell? And you gotta think about that. Right? Could something physical condemn you to hell? Getting a vaccine, does that change your faith? Getting the vaccine, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I don't believe in Jesus. Oh, I got to do wicked things. Oh, I worship Satan. Honestly, guys, I got the vaccine. 
I haven't changed my faith. I haven't, right? And if you look at the past with like area codes and social security numbers, after people got those numbers, did it change their faith? And the answer is absolutely not. Would God take something that physical and then all of a sudden say that, well, I don't care if you believe in Jesus or not. Because you got that mark, you're done. It doesn't really make any sense. I got the Pfizer shot. It wasn't like I got, you know, I had to sign this, you know, this, this form saying that, uh, you know, are you, do you agree to take this vaccination? And I agreed to it, but there's nothing on there saying, and now do you agree to deny Jesus? And then will you worship Pfizer? Would you worship them and now no longer worship God? And the answer is, I never saw it, but honestly, I never read the full contract. But still, even in that case, do you think God's gonna say, oh, well, you signed a contract? And that contract says you no longer believe in Jesus. Think about that. Does that contract determine my faith? Really? Like, think about this. Even if it was a physical thing, even if, like, um, the mark of the beast was a physical thing, like, on your, your hand and your forehead, the vaccine doesn't fit because it's not like it's put in your hand and in your forehead. Do you know how many people wouldn't take the vaccine if you have to take it through your forehead? No one would do it, right? It's, it, it doesn't really make sense to think about this too physically, but the thing that matters is our condemnation and salvation is determined by faith and faith alone. And there's just too many questions that pop up when it's physical. What about a child, 12, 13 years old, gets the mark because they wanna buy a bike? They're 12 years old. And then later, when they become 20, 21, what happens? Then they start to believe. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I was born in the church, I didn't accept Christ for 10 years. It took me, I was 10 years old. And then even after that, I had a big slump and I, I backslid for a bit. And then it was at 19 that I actually came back and I've been strong since that point. So it's been 19 years. So what about other people? They can change their minds, can't they? Yeah. They can not believe, but then later in life they realize, wow, I believe in God. And then what are they going to do? Because they have that physical marking. They're no longer able to go to heaven and they're condemned because of that marking on their forehead or their hands. It doesn't really make that much sense. What does it mean getting the mark of the beast on your forehead or your hands? Uh, in order for us to understand this, whether it's physical or spiritual, let's kind of take a look at how God talks about the forehead and the hands. And we're going to go all the way back to Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18, where God gives the words to the people. And what he says to them is, fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. But to show as a symbol, not as a literal thing, as a symbol, bind them on your hands and bind them on your forehead as a symbol. So when God talks about the forehead and the hands, he says it's a symbol for the heart and the mind. If you go all the way to Ezekiel chapter three, verses seven through nine, if you read the entire chapter, in this one verse, God is telling them, I will make your forehead as hard as the hardest stone. Now. Is God really making the forehead that hard so we can start crushing people with their heads? And the answer is no. When you read the context of the entire chapter, he's talking about the stubborn and rebellious Israelites. And he says, they are so hardened and I'm gonna make your forehead just as hard as theirs. What's he talking about? He's not talking about literal foreheads. He's talking about the symbol of this being your heart or your mind. And if you want to go a little bit deeper into it, like hands, what does it mean, the hands? Well, the Bible also says, like in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23, that Christ is the head of the body of Christ, right? Christ is the head and we are the hands and feet. And the hands and feet is we have to have the right mind of Christ and that will change our actions. And of course that makes sense because you don't take actions without your mind first. So if your mind is in Christ, then your actions will be in Christ. And if your mind is with Satan, then your actions will be with Satan. So here's the big thing. Who is condemned and who is saved? Is the person who thinks and acts like Christ is the person that goes to hell? Or is it the person that thinks and acts like Satan that goes to hell? And that's the thing we have to think about when it comes to this marking of the beast on the forehead and the hands. So I hope that's something that makes you think a lot more deeply about this. Uh, guys, go ahead, put your comments below. Just give me your honest opinion, what you thought about today's topic, if you loved it or not. If you have any more questions, go ahead, and put them down. We're gonna use it as questions for future videos too. All right, everyone, have a wonderful and awesome day. See you guys again next week. I'm Pastor Sky. This is Chewy, John Wick. See you guys again, later. Boo boo, doo -doo, boo boo, what is that? Dang. All right, see you later.